Hey everyone, Tamayas here and welcome to another Sword of Convalaria video. So in a couple of hours after this video goes live, we will have access on the global server to a brand new dual raider banner in the form of Inanna and Xavier. And I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for Inanna's raider banner, so there she is, of course. But I'm going to be very, very honest in this video and reviewing whether or not you should be pulling for her and the opportunity cost. Because yes, we can see some tier 0 characters are definitely 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 coming up but fear not because Inanna is still tier 0 over on the CN server despite all of these crazy crazy characters being released and I'll go over the reason why as well as showcase my own Inanna in the uh, server and how I've built her and how she has served me quite well since the beginning of the launch of the game so yeah without further ado let's talk about it so this dual rate banner is gonna take place on the 20th of September in a just I think five hours after this video goes live and um, um, it's gonna be there for about two weeks so you do have some buffer time in between because right now the Coco banner is currently underway but uh, we should be able to have uh, information on the banner coming up next and on the test server uh, the banner after that so you should see two debut banners ahead before you have to make a decision whether or not you should be pulling on Inanna and of course if you follow my channel on YouTube you will get uh, first hand news with regards to what we can expect and also if you follow this uh, info sheet that I've made you will also so be able to uh, have some exclusive access to the character news regardless let's talk about uh, the dual rate up banner system so you can see here this is a dual rate up banner uh, between dentelian and magnus so it's still 180 pulls of a destiny guaranteed so the pity is the same but the difference between this and the debut banner is that the pity the 180 pulls pity is not guaranteed to be uh, one of uh, the one that you want right for example because you can see here we've got two characters so it's going to be a 50 50 now the upside to this is that instead of a 50 percent chance to obtain the following because um on the debut banner that's how it works it's a 75 percent chance but the chance of obtaining for example inana if you don't care about javier as at all it's a uh, half of 75 so 32 0.5. So you need to keep that in mind if you're looking at the overall rate, which is why even though Inanna is going to be the rate up banner, it's still about a quarter chance, sorry, uh, one third chance to obtain the rate up character. So uh, yes, it's not you know guaranteed at all and the chances are not even in your favor because it's more likely you don't get her um but uh, just keep that in mind if you're going to uh, go deep into get into the um pool because what you can do is go all the way and still not get a single copy even if you go to 180 posts i think that's what you need to keep in mind so with that said you know the probabilities and you're looking at the future characters coming up should you still be pulling for her well we do have coco right now and we pretty much know Akampe is next the question is are we going to have augusta and sophia after that if we don't then we could potentially be looking at homa which is uh, i guess somewhat of a match and can uh, for a company into hasna now if that is the case, then technically you could go for Inanna, and I'll talk about Inanna's mechanic and why she's so strong in a bit. But uh, in, I, in my honest opinion, you could go for her. But one of the key things you need to understand is that she is not a debut character, which means she has been in the standard pool for quite some time, and you will be able to exchange for her via selectors. Now, if the developers celebrate the first anniversary, give us a free selector, or you know, there's a big, big drama or a big, big mistake happening, and the developers compensate us by having uh, giving us a selector, then you can pick her up. And there's also a purchase pack in the game as well that you can use to select Inanna, and that's what I did. Okay, so you can see that. I do have Inanna and um, I've been using her since the beginning of the game and she has served me really really well and the reason why she is going to be pretty much top tier until in the future even is because of this princess prayer skill now not only can she heal the rest of your team uh, we already know that but she has the ability to grant an extra action so allows one ally that has already acted again to act again so um, uh, it grants this ally attack two buff which is uh, physical and magic uh, attack buff uh, by 20% and magic defense buff by 40% and if it's a guard and then you will heal the guard for 6% of the magic the heal is uh, not really important because you know what the um, the target you never cast this on your guard you mostly 99.9 of the time will be casting this on your 
damage dealer. Now, the crazy part of this is it's on a three turn cooldown, okay, and on a two cost. So it's a pretty low cost. And a three turn cooldown means if you use um, one of the tarot that grants you cooldown, this one, okay, reduces the CD, uh, the cooldown of all active skill by one turn when you're not using any active skill and on standby, then it's pretty much every other turn you can use it, which is absolutely insane. And because she has her own passive trait where um, heals, uh, heals the ally with the lowest HP within three tiles uh, and grants them a buff, you, she can passively heal and you don't have to cast any skill unless there's a lot of healing pressure, then the cooldown will just be reset. You can cast this very, very often. Now, she is also used a lot in the PvE stages, um, either Taro stages or even the, um, the weapon stages because she can run, for example, the uh, Elegance of the Imprints, converting debuffs into um, buffs. And she's got AoE heal as well, so that just allows her to easily, easily convert that into buffs for the rest of the team. And in terms of the weapons, I'm running the cube to increase the healing effect, and the spring pill is basically a one size fit all. Uh, and then the loadout, I have the heals and the summoning of the guard, and this guard is super helpful, uh, drawing aggro, tanking hits, and just overall, she is such a versatile utility character and this princess prayer i just have to stress one more time how important this is because for later game modes when you are playing against the tower which is turn uh, count based and um you know having your main dps go again and uh, equipping some of these uh engravings that allows you to reset cooldowns and energy the synergy is exponential right so uh, this mechanic as long as no other characters gives or grants other units act the ability to act again and Nana will always be tier 0 and as a support she pretty much does it all so uh, she's gonna be super super dominating and I have been farming her shards as well as you can see and at 5 stars, she will of course heal 2 allies instead of 1 with the lowest HP and grants them a level 2 debuff for 2 turns. It's just so, so damn strong. The amount of uh, uh, supporting abilities she has built into the kit. So uh, overall, definitely, definitely a worth, uh, worthy character to grab now. Now, dual rate banner is a huge gamble. It's not a debut banner that uh, where you can get super, super lucky. So in my honest opinion, Personally, I would skip just due to the fact that you will be able to potentially luck sack her or pick up uh, pick her up from a selector in the future. And don't forget, in the shop, you can also pick her up from um, a selector that will be available to you as you are converting shards into these uh, currencies. I know it's going to take a few months time, but that's guaranteed in Nana, right? And there aren't a lot of other fantastic choices in there. So if you have the patience to save in playing this for the long term, I would 100% just say skip, especially with all of these crazy crazy tier zeros coming up and um, we've got coco and a company next and if we directly go into sophia and augusta after that oh my goodness that's gonna be quite quite nasty so uh yes looking at her even though she's a tier zero character um i personally just want to say that uh, you ideally want to save if you are free to play or small spender now taking a look at the pvp tier list this is translated from the cn guide and done uh, fantastically by potato sourdough you can see inana is 9.7 the pvp score rating so even if you are looking to pull for pvp and xavier is going to be your choice he's still only a 7.2 uh score character so uh yeah i think the choice is very obvious only if you are a spender or if you trust your luck sacking going for inana otherwise i would personally just say but she is definitely worthy of a tier zero spot uh in your roster and um she is gonna have a very very long future of viability uh as well so yeah let me know your thoughts and thank you guys once again for watching best of luck with your post if you're pulling but otherwise i will see you guys in the next video goodbye now